a member in one of the hatch groups I'm in wanted to know how to create separate underlay for letters so that they could be run in a different color. Now, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, because even when we're doing multicolor letters, you'll get the best result when you do each letter completely, rather than color sorting to minimize thread changes. When I was first getting into digitizing, there was no auto underlay, and objects did have to have their underlay created manually. To do that, I used an offsets tool to create the shapes for my underlay objects. Let's see how you do that in Hatch. I've already created some lettering using the lettering tool, just a couple of letters here, Ohio. It's block two, I've set the size to 30, and I've turned off the underlay. So if I press T on the keyboard, you'll see no underlay. So I'll start by selecting my text. From the Create Layouts toolbox, I'll choose Create Outlines and Offsets. I don't need an outline. I do need an offset outline, and I can set it to minus 0.5, so that will set it inside the object. I only want one. We'll use a single run. I'll use black so we can see it. I want to go around the whole object, I want to use these corners and I want to include holes. So I'll click OK. And there we have it. Now, it's not underlay yet, is it? Sort of an edge run, but maybe we want a little more than that. I'm going to hide my original text, select it, right click, and do Hide Selected. Then I'll select all, Control A, and I'm going to turn this to a fill. And that didn't give us what we wanted, did it? So I'm going to change some attributes here. With it all selected, I'm going to set it to satin, change the spacing to 2.5 should work, turn on auto split. On the stitching tab, I'll turn off this underlay, and I think I'll leave the edge run. And that still didn't give us what we wanted. The I turned out OK, but the other letters, mm, we need to do some work. Now the O, if we select the O, we can see that we have two objects. The center object is underneath. So I'm just going to move that down one. And I want to use that to remove stitches in this one. Now when you use this tool, go to the Edit Objects Toolbox. With that selected, I can see that Remove Overlaps is grayed out. And that's because these are not dense enough to remove overlaps. So we'll just change that back to a, a denser fill. We'll just change it to Tatami. I'll select that inner piece and do Remove Overlaps. Now first I'm going to right click because you want to have your overlap set at zero. Click OK. Now it's Remove the Overlap, which we can see there, and I'll just get rid of that other piece. And now I can change this back. Now that's still not going to be very good underlay because the stitch angles are not very good. So with it selected, we'll do Add Stitch Angles. And we'll just drag out some angles here. Press Enter and Escape. And there we go. We really don't need to go through that process for this one. You can just select it, right click and drag, and that will just clone it right over there, and we can get rid of those other pieces. Now the H. When we do outlines and offsets, it creates an outline around the whole object the way we had it set up. So instead of having three pieces like a normal H is, two verticals and one horizontal, we have one shape, and that's not going to work here. So we need to do some, use some other tools to split this up. And we'll use the knife tool for that. I'm going to do zoom in, press B on the keyboard, zoom in. And I'm also going to turn off true view. And with it selected, I'll just select the knife tool and just make a couple cuts like that. And now we have our pieces. Now they have reverted back to a full normal satin, so we'll need to do some changes there. And we have some wonky angles, so instead of 
adding angles, we're going to remove stitch angles. And let's um, change the angle on this. I'll select it, press H on the keyboard to enter reshape mode, find my little angle handle and move it like that. And I want to get rid of that travel stitch. Now the reason that travel stitch is there is because this piece is sewing then that one and that one. And that's kind of odd. We don't want that order. So I'm going to zoom out here so I see all my underlay letters. And I'm going to select each one. Select the first one by left clicking. Then I'm going to hold down the control key. Select all the other pieces in the order that I want them to sew. Mostly they're in the right order. And then I'll click the one, two, three button. And this has shifted around. I'll turn on my original letters and hide all. Move them so that they're at the bottom. And there we have it. Now this is not considered good practice for sewing because if you sew all of these underlay pieces and then you come back and sew these letters, depending on what's going on on your machine and what kind of fabric you have and how you've stabilized, you could have underlay showing because of all the shifty nature of sewing at the machine. The tensions, the thread tensions are pulling the fabric and things just get out of line. So this is not really good practice. Can you make it so that this sews and then that and then the underlay and then the letter and then the underlay in this letter? Yes. And to do that, we'll need to break apart our letter. You can either choose break apart from the toolbox or just press Control K. And now we have separate letters. And now we'll just move those into place. And now our design will sew, and we can watch it. We'll go to the stitch player, and we'll ramp it up really fast. So it sews the underlay, and then it'll sew a letter. Now the problem with breaking apart letters like this is that you no longer have a text object that you can edit. Of course, since we've done all this manual underlay, it's not really all that editable anyway, unless you want to get rid of that underlay. So it might not really be a big deal in this situation. Now chances are you're not likely to ever do something like this, but we just learned a lot of cool tools in Hatch that can make it easy to create new objects without really having to do any manual digitizing. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and make a comment. It's like getting a gold star and makes me want to do more videos.